More than two years ago, COVID-19 shut New York City down. Governors take historic actions to try and slow the spread of the outbreak. Mental health services had to adapt, losing the in-person contact so essential to the work. This is particularly true in music therapy, which focuses on creating interaction and engagement through physical contact. Virtual therapy meant navigating the technological barriers so that clinicians and clients could attune to one another. In-person contact and interaction is at the core of music therapy. The Nordoff Robbins approach is utilized across the globe. The center located at NYU Steinhardt offers a number of services. The Nordoff Robbins approach was created by Paul Nordoff and Clive Robbins. They looked for an effective way to reach children with music based on the belief that everyone possesses a sensitivity that can be used for personal growth and development. So the big job of the therapist is to find a way to attune to and create this sense of empathy through their music. Are they interacting? Are they listening to the therapist and interacting with them? A little bit, for a while, for the whole session. And then, is there a sense of reciprocity in the music where the real structure and forward direction of the session is being sh shared by both the client and the therapist? Sessions at Nordoff Robbins are recorded and managed by student filmers. They offer clinicians a third-person perspective when they break down and analyze a session, spotting improvements in just a matter of weeks. So I just want to say from, you know, early January to now, this it's such a short period of time, but yes. I, I see the difference, it's just do. as you say. Like, yeah. before he would came in and be like, what time? Like, if we have yeah. something, something minutes left. And right. today it feels really different in terms of just as you say, like how much you want to do this together to create this yeah. music, how focused you are, and the eye contact too. So yeah. I just wanted to make a comment on that. No, it's yeah. please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're so in it and being spontaneous in the sure. moment, right. and spontaneous, yeah. and it's like, okay, now what really did happen? Mm -hmm. Looking at the index, watching the recording, getting a sense of, hey, wait, here's an area where we can develop this more, or you know, developing ideas about how to build on each session. So your, you know, contributions can really help with that. But first, when they said, okay, we're going to try and do Zoom sessions, we're like, no way. How are we going to do Zoom session? How are we going to do Zoom over music therapy? It was really, really hard. Taking away the ability to meet in person meant finding new ways to create the intimate connection, a driving force that builds trust with clients. Well, here we are. We're in lockdown. We don't know how long we're going to be here. Let's see what we can make. Let's see how we can make this work. But the suppressed background noise function is low. We turn off the echo cancellation. We make sure that original sound is on. I think you can pick up a lot more when you're in the room with someone versus when um, you have like competing sound streams over Zoom and they might not have great internet connectivity or they might have a poor microphone. So I'm using a keyboard and this, um, this is a focus right, so you go right into the computer. There's less kind of white noise and it's more direct. How much, how complex could it be? How loud could it be? All of those things, they're hard enough in a room with somebody to do it virtually is even harder, but it means a the therapist has to listen even closer. How is this person perceiving what it is. How loud am I playing? How are they hearing how loud it is? Very, very difficult because you're not, you're in two different rooms. However, surprisingly, we've been having some really nice sessions remotely because it's made the therapists more sensitive to how is the client perceiving what I'm doing. Maybe three or four sessions in when he starts going from side to side and then I start going from side to side and he sort of realized in that moment that I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't kind of a, a TV program, that I was actually there live responding to him. And from that moment on, it was just like 
magic. And so they're picking up all the nonverbal cues from somebody, how they're moving, how what their facial expression is, and putting that into their music. So that this is a sense of a collaboration, it's a partnership. It's not, I'm going to teach you how to play music, but we're in this place together. How are we going to share our energy together? What are we going to do together that really can help you to discover potentials that you may not even be aware of? Music therapy has helped massively um, during the pandemic. It has given him a platform to be able to still express himself in a creative and fun way. It helps him in many ways, uh, physically, cognitively, emotionally. It has helped him um, focus, also be aware of others, especially in a group setting, and has also helped him with his patience and turn-taking. Eric Stadowski is the son of Mary Clancy. He's a client with autism who was receiving treatment from Rodolph Robbins when the pandemic hit. Eric had been dependent on his family for his social needs. However, Virtual music therapy helped change this for Eric. With fewer distractions, Eric was able to make friends through group Zoom therapy sessions. They both talked about their emotions and then they would sing about their emotions. And for autistic people, this is kind of breakthrough to be able to, disc to discuss em emotions. You're just on this little screen. So all of a sudden, everything just kind of gets funneled into this communication uh, that hadn't happened before. One of his favorite things, and many autistic people, this is true, he loves watching the news. As a former volunteer firefighter, I Because you have that calm blue background. You have one person, they're not moving around, and they're speaking very slowly and distinctly. To him, it, it was kind of like that. I saw on the video with the Christmas concert they had, and again, I wasn't there, so he's not nervous about his parents being there. I saw how happy he was. This is for you, Zachary. He keeps a calendar on the fridge and he would count the days to music therapy. And I would notice that morning he would even wake up early looking forward to seeing his, his buddies. You know, I can't tell you how many forms I've had to fill out for him where they say they're trying to gauge how disabled he is as an autistic person. And they always say, does, does he have any friends? And for most of his life, I've had to write no. Now I'm writing yes. Feel that connection with another person feels very intimate, very profound, and you lose a sense of being isolated. It's really cultivating the sense of shared community experience where they feel kind of like I'm a part of something.